Okay, okay Hassan, uh, we can uh, start. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, welcome to another episode of uh, CXO uh, Global Forum. Uh, today is, an, uh, is a special episode uh, with uh, one of our technology partners, Avanza Solution. Uh, and with me today is Mr. Ali Ahmed Tabirani and Mr. Mohammed Taha Aftab, um, who will be uh, on the panel today and uh, will be sharing their insights about the company and uh, their uh, success story so far. Assalamu uh, alaikum, sir. How are you guys? Waalaikum uh, salam, Hassan. Alhamdulillah, we are fine. How are you guys? Waalaikum uh, salam. How are you? Uh, Okay, so I'll start my first uh, question uh, from Mr. Ali. Uh, uh, tell me about Venza Group and Avenza Solutions. Uh, uh, what is the business? What are the uh, you know uh, services that you guys offer, and what is the company all about? Uh, <clears throat> I believe if uh, Taha Saab can uh, mute the speaker and mic, it would be great. Yeah, sure. Um, well, this question is uh, more uh, towards the pre-sales side. So Taha may be able to answer this better. However, Avanza Solutions uh, uh, was founded back in around uh, 2000s. And uh, we started as a banking solutions provider. We started off with one product, Rendezvous. And the, over the period of time, we have now built, alhamdulillah, around 25 products in the banking sector. And uh, <clears throat> we have been excelling, alhamdulillah, at the Pasha Award has been an evidence that um, uh, we are actually the best in business. Perfect. Uh, Taha if you can also shed some light on uh, the question. Uh, OK, Hassan. Uh, can you hear me, guys? Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. Basically, Avanza is a more than two decades old company. Uh, we started uh, uh, developing the uh, banking middleware software, then we excelled into digital banking, and then we grew into a group of companies. Uh, the Dubai side, which is an Avanza innovation, uh, is a pioneer in the blockchain technology and other nascent technologies like uh, AI, robotics, and uh, such kind of things. Uh, so currently, like we, our business is spread like uh, around uh, approximately all over the world. Like in Africa, we have a good capture. Like in uh, in Middle East region, and now we have also ventured into the USA region with uh, our partner Ashri Tech. So and about that Pasha thing, uh, I think it's not a new thing uh, for Avanza Solutions because uh, last year we also won uh, just Pasha as well as the Apect Awards. Uh, for our CRM solution. So uh, this time again, luckily, uh, we got it. So thanks to the overall team. All right. So since you have mentioned about uh, the team, um, tell us about the culture of the organization and uh, your approach and policies towards uh, the employees that you guys hire. Obviously, the success lies with the uh, you know employees and the team, like you have mentioned. Uh, so what what is the culture within the organization for employees? Okay, that's a very good question because uh, like I, it's been like 14, 15 years that I'm working in Pakistani IT industry, especially in the fintech industry. And I have also worked in other competitor companies of fintech, like uh, which are the biggest names of fintechs and also the other companies as well. Uh, I have seen Avanza Solutions environment uh, a very collaborative and a much positive environment than other uh, software companies or fintechs or generally uh, speaking offices. So uh, we have a very, uh, you can say, empathetic environment where everyone helps each other most of the time, most of the time. And the conventional like politics and all these things are uh, not very prevalent here. That's a very good thing. And uh, nobody starts uh, stops you from learning or excelling into uh, new ideas and new ventures so uh, our policy towards employees like very uh, employee friendly you can say somewhat employee friendly and uh, as compared to other companies like the work balance uh, structure 
the HR policies towards the remunerations and uh, other similar things. Exposure to the industry, exposure to the fintech fraternity from which we belong. Uh, that's a very key thing. So, additional to that, uh, Tasa, what, what um, actually are the inductions, induction criteria and procedures for uh, uh, Venza Group? Are you guys, uh, do you publish your openings? Uh, how do you actually recruit people? Uh, because we've been having a round of discussions of, around, uh, you know, uh, providing opportunities to the youngsters in uh, companies like yours. Uh, so what are the areas where you uh, find it, you know, uh, where do you think that, you know, the newcomers are encouraged uh, within our, our solutions? Uh, well, we start from, directly start from the universities. Like when I was in my university, I used to see uh, there, there is a job board in every university. Uh, I used to see Avanza Solutions opportunity. So Avanza Solutions was introduced to me back then uh, in my university days. So there are uh, multiple about, uh, multiple approaches towards uh, new inductions. Like we also contact, go to universities and do, uh, do perform the uh, recruitment drives there to hire the fresh blood, the fresh energetic people from who are uh, immediately graduating from good universities like NAD and uh, Sir Sayyid and FAST. So we conduct, actually uh, go there and conduct uh, hiring drives. And then we also uh, have the conventional things to uh, publish our vacancies like uh, LinkedIn and rosy.pk and so on. And uh, also we also have an incubation center in which what we do that we uh, hire uh, candidates, select them, and we induct them in that uh, incubation center to train them uh, on the new technologies which are using. And then those uh, trained resources are uh, selected to other project teams and uh, other development units. So uh, we have a very process oriented and structured uh, hiring policy and uh, screening policy as well. Fair enough. Um, uh, Ali, please feel free to uh, jump on to any questions uh, that are relevant to you. So I'm not being very specific with the questions, but uh, you're more than welcome. Yeah, sure. Um, basically, Avanza has started their graduate training program the last few years, and that has been, you know, really successful. That uh, the students are from all over the universities join us for test, and then they go through the process of training specific to our products, and uh, then later on they are inducted in different depart different departments, um, and that has actually really helped us in dealing with the uh, um, hiring of resources and such. Uh, most of the time, um, when we uh, hire resources, we provide intensive trainings because our products are very specialized banking financial products. And then later on, we also uh, teach them how to do secure coding and all that because security has been a really uh, important thing uh, these days in financial industry. So uh, we go, the, the university students have to go through a very long, tedious training kind of process. Then they start, you know, adding value into our products. So in the in the meanwhile, uh, we actually encourage our, uh, all these students because they are looking at the financial products the first time. So whatever ideas and the new things they come up to, to their minds, we encourage them and we try to incorporate those ideas as well. So few of these ideas in the recent products have actually been suggested by fresh graduates that have just been passed out from the university. So we actually encourage a lot of uh, such newcomers into uh, take the initiative and all. Perfect. So, moving on to the next question, uh, could you share the uh, journey and achievements of Avenza Solutions so far? Especially uh, if we talk specifically, uh, uh, you know, your experience with the customer satisfaction and the uh, success recipe behind it. Uh, okay, as far as the first part of your question, Avenza success story is uh, it's a saga of success is like uh, it started like two deep more than two decades back as a single company and then we uh, opened our branch in uh, middle east in dubai uh, which is just a android technology but that's also part of the group and uh, then we excelled and we partnered with uh, uh, a corporate to produce another company which is uh, solely our uh, payment gateway uh, which is apps avanza premier payment gateway so we have, we have uh, grown from a single company to uh, multiple companies and a group of companies uh, 
uh, throughout these two decades. And also further, uh, recently uh, we have partnered with Ashri Tech to uh, put our footsteps uh, to try put our footsteps in USA region as well. So we are currently like uh, under in, in the process of making some new sales there. So as far as the global uh, footprint is concerned, we have our footprint in like in Central Asian region as well in the Middle Eastern region locally, like in Afghanistan, Bangladesh, and in African countries as well. So this is the overall, uh, what you can say, success story, I think. And the recipe behind is the, uh, I would say, uh, uh, like technical expertise and innovations, that is too as well. That is also a part uh, and a key ingredient of the recipe. But what I consider is that uh, for any organization to grow and excel, is the honesty and sincerity level of their employees with their own work and with the company as well and vice versa like and vice versa means like the same emotion and sentiment should be shared by the company's management as well like for example the benefits of the employees and the satisfaction level of the employees so uh, we have uh, like processes uh, intact in which uh, continuous feedback is taken from the employees regarding the uh, that how they are happy with the uh, work environment, how they are happy with their bosses, and so on. And the third thing, uh, third, I think last part of your question was uh, about the customer satisfaction. Uh, I think uh, we are a company who is very flexible uh, just to uh, satisfy the customer uh, because the customer satisfaction is the topmost priority. So uh, what uh, what we do is we offer such kind of solutions and such kind of pricing models uh, to customer to facilitate them, enhance their business, and to add value uh, in their existing processes. Uh, so I think overall customer uh, satisfaction is evident. Like we have some biggest banks uh, as our customers satisfy customers and. We are continuously like uh, offering them upgrades and they are purchasing upgrades from us and things like that. We are uh, continuously signing new banks. So uh, that's pretty much about it. And of course, uh, the small hiccups are in every technical solution. Mein aate. You can't avoid that. <clears throat> but maximum you can do is to provide a 99.9% uh, effective solution. So I think which we uh, successfully do and are doing uh, in many banks. All right. So moving on to the specific, uh, uh, you know, uh, reason why we are having this uh, uh, conversation today. So um, first of all, congratulations uh, to you and your team for uh, receiving the Symmetry Award. Uh, we just wanted to know, tell us about uh, the experience. How did you guys actually perceive uh, uh, the, you know, uh, nomination and then after winning the award how did you guys celebrate well uh, uh, what have what it all started with just a idea idea behind the whole symmetry product or the digital banking platform was this that uh, conventionally there used to be a middleware uh, in the bank which uh, which is supposed to be the center like heart of the all uh, ADC or IT infrastructure and all the channels are connected from that bank. But now uh, it was a, a concept or an idea uh, perceived by our uh, like thinkers like uh, our pre-sales and our PD team that there should be a centralized system for all the digital channels because you know at this age it's not just mobile banking or internet banking and IVR. Uh, now, lots of uh, digital banking channels are, are being introduced, like uh, digital onboarding, uh, biometric systems, and uh, you name it, uh, so on and so forth. So the idea was to have a centralized uh, multi-channel uh, switch or a system from which all of the digital channels can connect, like AI system chatbox. And on that uh, core system, we would be able to define the rules and uh, the regulations and the configuration and the business logic of all those uh, like processes or transactions. And then from there, uh, uh, the initial transactions will uh, fall on the that system. 
it will be processed and then it will be uh, transferred to the middleware or routed to the middleware and from there the middleware will perform its uh, conventional uh, processing which uh, it already does so it all started with an idea and then uh, we shared this idea with our technical team and uh, thanks to then enters our the super pd team uh, of ali bhai uh, <clears throat> who envisioned the project uh, and uh, you know you can say the created or produced its architecture in such a way that we can integrate uh, it with uh, many other systems like we also uh, developing an open api platform in it and uh, then the result is in front of you and we have also been able to it's not just a, uh, it started with a concept but it grew into a whole uh, actual uh, product which is already been sold and being deployed in uh, existing banks which are our which were our existing customers and we cross sell them uh, and the project is already in the pipeline so uh, i think uh, it is definitely a, a success story because there was a time i i still remember i was a part of it that uh, these the uh, this digital banking channel or the symmetry platform was uh, like uh, supposed to be a story or a some some uh, you would say a dream come true type of thing but now uh, we are actually having it and selling it in the uh, to other banks and so that's yeah. pretty much about it and so, i think on the technical side that how uh, uh, it actually developed into a system a sellable system uh, our super uh, pd lead mr ali would be able to throw some more light on it and how they uh, easily perceived it <clears throat> yeah basically uh, when they first uh, pitched that idea to me it was you know very challenging because uh, these days there are so many integrations and all so we had a lot of dimensions that um, in which there was once there was solving real customer problem that they are facing and it should be meaningful to them and then there is uh, there since we are a product based company so there are there is always a dimension of that the product needs to be taken up by the implementation team and then get implemented in different product banks and customizations and all then there is a support aspect as well and a lot of times these dimensions are contradicting each other there are contradicting requirements for problems and all that stuff so uh, basically we actually sat down together that there was a champion from the customer side pre sales team there was a champion from the implementation team a champion from the support side that basically we sat together and we actually mulled over all the features and all the functionalities and then we agreed on that this is you know this is something that we need to uh, uh, d- uh, develop and then finally it went into the development and the, the product came out all right so for the audience if you uh, can briefly uh, uh, tell us about what uh, this uh, symmetry award is all about and uh, we understand that you secured the gold uh, uh, award uh, for avanza and if you can also tell us about the categories of the award so that you know the audience is well aware and uh, specifically the impact of uh, you know receiving this award uh, for the di- digital banking industry so ha i think you know already um ali can you hear ta no no i can't hear you uh am i audible now yes okay so um i think last year when we enrolled into uh, pasha we didn't enroll this product rather we enrolled crm and we also won that in that category this time we enrolled this product uh, we have we enrolled the several products like there was the e statement product as well and uh, other products like uh, i think remittance system uh, was also there uh, but this uh, product was the, like you can say a hot cake for us to sell and to present there in the pasha award as well so what we did that we decided to uh, go with that product and uh, then definitely there was a challenge to uh, display them and to uh create a presentation which uh, and a demo which uh, creates a wow factor <clears throat> because you know it's just 10 minutes to display all the prowess of your uh, system and your solution and you have to just uh, 
go through this uh, perform a demo as well and uh, so it was a challenging mr hamad uh, abdul haq uh, who's the global pre sales head uh, heads off to him he did that he presented it uh, and then basically the category was retail and banking because uh, uh, this kind of products sort of uh, stands towards the retail products of the banks like card management and uh, other channels like uh, mobile and uh, uh, nfc modules chatbots open api so this is pretty much uh, like pasha considers them as uh, retail and banking so we won that uh, we, uh, and we were the i think we were the only winners there was no runner ups in that category so uh, we were the only winners in that category perfect uh, so uh with um, you know, technology rapidly evolving uh you know uh, how does the vendor solution keep up uh, their pace with the changing demands and uh, the trends in the industry yeah uh, uh yeah basically um, uh, what we do is we have actually a team of architects who are continuously doing research and development into new technologies um, um, keep an eye, keep an eye on what the big giants like netflix linkedin all of these companies are doing and implementing it there and they are sharing their the good thing is that they are sharing their lessons learned so based on all of those uh, research and development we actually see that which architecture is basically fitting in our uh, particular solutions as well and we try to do it obviously on the merit basis that we uh, you know go through the entire process of building pros and cons and evaluating architectures technologies there are different parameters that we have to uh, look into like uh, how much this technology has been uh, you know sustainable enough and so far and all these things and after that we actually come up with the when we are uh, actually uh, delivering and developing a new product we also try to uh, you know upgrade our technology stack and come up with a new technology stack and new technology trends all right so um continuing to what you have uh, just explained uh, the next question is uh, uh, the, if you can you know further elaborate uh, what is the uh, product development process and what are the, the uh, common challenges that you have faced during the process uh okay um the uh, as i explained a little while ago that there are different dimensions there is a customer so problem solving uh, dimension that it, it has to solve some real customer problem and it's not like just a product for the sake of product right so uh, that is a one dimension then there is the other dimension that we have to do implementations in different banks so it should be customizable then there is support dimension and these are contradicting often so uh, what we try to do is there are so many constraints and so uh, complexity of the solution so we try to drop a few constraints obviously we cannot drop customer satisfaction constraint so that is on the top most uh, uh, agenda after we have uh, you know build a solution around what uh, satisfies the customer most then we keep on adding more and more constraints that how it is going to ease life of an implementation engineer how it is going to ease life of a support engineer and so on and so forth while making sure that entire time the solution remains feasible and it's acceptable to the customer right so the all of these champions from different departments we collaborate and we discuss and debate a lot of things um, and the sessions you know very we have we do a very very long sessions to conceive the features and how the architecture will be how it will be technically implemented and all that then later on once you have decided on the architecture and uh, decided on uh, major decisions that needs to be taken in the beginning then later on it just remains is that you have to split into different deliverables and release planning and sprint planning and all that and hand it over to the developers and you know uh, all that stuff all right so and considering that you know this uh, this product belongs to the financial industry uh, banking industry uh, uh, specifically uh which is a very you know customer focused and customer driven industry um you uh, you know slightly touched upon the back end side and the uh, efforts that you guys uh, have put in in um, you know developing this uh, tool together what are the focused areas uh, uh, that were considered while uh, you know uh, creating this product 
for the customer experience side, the user experience side, uh, the overall uh, you know UI and UX of this uh, particular tool? Well, uh, well, that's a very good question because uh, as uh, as our uh, customer experience side is evolving, not just our but globally, because now the customer wants everything on a single tap, on a single finger tap. Uh, now gone are those days in which customers uh, used to go to the branches and wait in the lines and so on and so forth. Now customer himself wants QR code uh, to scan QR code and make payments and to just tap their mobile devices uh, and make payments through tokenization and all this. So customer experience is the main focus uh, and the ease of the performing and uh, ele electronic transactions. Because you know what our focus is, we as a fintech. And also, uh, not just fintechs, but banks and the uh, regulator, which is the central bank, uh, state bank of Pakistan, is uh, very much focused on financial inclusion. So all of these uh, channels like QR code scanning and NFC and tokenization and uh, open APIs, these are focused uh, uh, as from, from my perspective, what I see, that eventually it will bring more financial inclusion in, in, a, in a country like us, where currently financial inclusion uh, statistics are not that satisfactory. So uh, user experience is definitely uh, a very important thing because nowadays a user is not just a novice user, even uh, even uh, such a, a user which we consider is novice is, no, is not novice anymore. He has uh, or they have because the, the, the Gen Z, which uh, uh, is evolved, seeing all these mobile apps and all these technology, what we did, we did an actual research, uh, a market research uh, that uh, in Pakistan or globally, region-wise, we did it region-wise, like in Africa, in, in those regions in, in which we have uh, good footstep and good customers, like in Africa region, Middle East region, and our uh, Asia Pacific region that uh, what are the percentage of gen z uh, <clears throat> users who are uh, using digital apps and what is the percentage who are using digital apps and to perform transactions and uh, uh, other similar things like that so we first we did this kind of research and then we uh, for the ui ux designing we have we did a design thinking process in which uh, we sit together with the graphic designers and the development teams and we try to uh, fix a solution try to produce a solution which is like both uh, customer friendly from ux point of view because you know nowadays a customer can very easily he has so much options in market available like there are so many fintechs and so many uh, platforms from which customer can uh, perform uh, digital transactions like easy pesa and uh, so on and so forth that he can just switch from your uh, transaction in a one go if he doesn't like anything so the user experience uh, should be designed in such a way that it would be uh, most uh, you can say uh, convenient and easy for a common person to perform a digital transaction because <clears throat> but as a society, we are not that technology adapting uh, society generally. I'm, I'm talking generally about uh, the overall population of Pakistan. Because, you know, when we are thinking something uh, on a larger perspective, on a retail per perspective, uh, especially we have to consider the overall population of the, of the country. So people are not that much technology uh, savvy. So... Uh, <clears throat> providing them a QR code to scan to perform their uh, transaction. It will take some time for the people to uh, adapt that technology and first uh, first of all, trust that technology. So the user experience thing is considered during the design thinking and then the uh, most important thing is a security perspective. Like often customers are uh, like very afraid that they will lose their data or they will, they will be a victim of some kind of uh, fraud or, or and a cyber attack or something like that. So then the design, when the design actually, uh, the, uh, the product architecture and the product pipeline uh, has been developed and uh, <laughs> produced into a shape, then we uh, also have to consider the uh, security standards which are uh, currently prevalent in the market like P, uh, PCID, PADSS and PASFS and so on and so forth. So all of these like uh, is a stage by stage process and each stage is very comprehensive and iterative. 
uh, to build out and produce a good uh, product. So we have to go through all these stages. All right. So, and, uh, you know, continuing to uh, what you just mentioned, what is your uh, vision for the future to uh, actually uh, keep ahead of the, you know, stay ahead of the curve and, uh, you know, tackle your competition as well for this particular product? Uh, I think it would be, this is, I think we are the pioneers of uh, this technology uh, here in Pakistan. So uh, definitely uh, complying with the new latest trends and technologies and the uh, things which are being introduced internationally. Like for example, let's take example of India. Like in Indian region, they are like somewhat similar nation as, uh, as we are. They have adopted to the QR code scanning is uh, so much so that even a, a street vendor is using a QR code. And the people is using them. The people are actually using them. So we also have our target to uh, achieve this kind of success that people are uh, so much interested in cashless transactions and on every level and scale of society. Like uh, like I have given an example of a street vendor, a card vendor. So our goal is to do this and definitely. Uh, <clears throat> Every success story has uh, a long uh, line of successes and failures and iterations and re -iterations. But definitely, we have a, a five-year uh, five plan, development plan for this product that uh, in, in every uh, ascending year, we want to see this product on a new level. And, uh, you know, other, other market trends and other things are also like you can say applicable on this kind of thing because uh, you know we have seen COVID uh, in our recent past and uh, uh, also the regulatory perspective like for example for example the regulator or the central bank SBP uh, mandates that uh, every bank should uh, issue NFC cards and QR codes and all these things then it, it has to be done just like RAS, take example of RAS payments, RAS QR payments, P2P payments. Since it's been mandated by the uh, regulatory authority, so that's why every bank is running towards it. So the uh, regulatory authority, which is SBP, definitely sustain or state-owned uh, agency. <clears throat> so uh, their perspective and their regulations are also very important to consider in the development of uh, products which uh, we sell, like. Uh, which are financial products or banking products. So definitely we have a five-year development plan for our product and we see them are uh, due to our continuous development uh, and acquiring of technology by our PD team and our implementation teams. Definitely uh, it's in plan and we'll be able to achieve it, inshallah. Perfect. So you did mention about uh, the product roadmap. Uh, an important aspect uh, for your customers uh, is is the support mechanism that you uh, guys must have uh, you know prepared for the customers who adopt your solution so if you can throw some light on uh, uh, the support mechanism uh, that you have uh, built for this particular product and that will be passed on to your customer okay <clears throat> Whenever we propose a solution to our customer, it's a it's a standard part of our uh, like offering, like a, it's a standard part of our technical proposal. So we have a support department, a whole unit of support team, uh, in which there are uh, two levels of support, like L1 and and L2 support, and uh, we also use a uh, incident management system Zendesk, uh, which is given provided to the bank, and bank is able to log their incidences directly by themselves uh, through that system and you know our uh, whenever you uh, pitch a product to a customer even in the pre-sales level the you can say the uh, sla which is uh, sla and all the support terms are pre-agreed and well defined as a process uh, or as an sop in our uh, in our books and in our documentations so uh, ongoing support is like part of uh, every software deployment 
but we definitely uh, believe in this and we also uh, do practice this that we should go extra mile to provide support and satisfaction for the customer. So we are also growing our teams, our support teams and other teams to be to become more equipped uh, resource wise to support our customers. So uh, that's it. All right. So a uh, few final words from both of you uh, about uh, the potential customers and uh, the customers in the market who can benefit from your product. Uh, if you can, um, you know, uh, conclude uh, today's session with your final remarks on uh, uh, the go-to customers and uh, the, the potential leads in the market that you feel can uh, take benefit from your solution. Uh, if you have any message for them, please. Uh... Yeah, yeah, sure. I will start and then uh, Taha can actually conclude this. Um, basically, we have been uh, developing financial products from quite a long time, and we have a lot of accumulated experience inside the organization. Uh, a lot of uh, people from different domains and backgrounds have also joined us along the way. So all of these experience we are adding up in our new product development and learning from the past mistakes that we have done because we have spent quite a significant amount of time in the software industry and banking uh, industry. So we are basically building products that are not only uh, actually solving customer problems, but they are easy to give support. And we are building support tools that are missing, that were missing previously. And we have realized over the period of time that all of these uh, tools should be part of our standard product offering. So um, now as the days are passing by and every new day, we are actually you know maturing our products with a, with a lot of uh, 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 another tools and techniques that are basically helping our customers in doing their day-to-day -day business in much more ease and uh, they are able to you know integrate a lot of channels and AI tools and all that uh, in order to give their customers uh, a better experience and if there are any issues uh, with the bank's customers is having those issues are resolved in a timely manner and all that so we are focusing on this and we are trying to uh, you know uh, uplift the bank's service level uh, so that uh, you know they are able to service their customers better and uh, obviously uh, it will build uh, it will build a, a good name for us as well so uh -huh. Well, just simply, uh, I would uh, second uh, Ali Bhai's uh, comments that the uh, main aim and main focus is for uh, customer satisfaction and providing a solution which will overall benefit the uh, whole payment industry and the IT fraternity as well. Because we as a fintech thinks that uh, we are one of those people who can bring a financial disrupt and a in uh, or at least a disrupt in the electronic payments industry not financial but electronic payments industry so uh, we keep those things uh, in our mind and uh, plan our uh, further ventures and uh, products accordingly so uh, lots of other products we are uh, like uh, cooking inside right now uh, so all those products are uh, considered in the same way same design thinking procedures and then uh, considering the same uh, technology stack uh, by our technical teams and also considering the pricing model uh, as well because nowadays uh, due to the economic situation we have to be flexible in our pricing models and all these things so these uh, things also have to be considered so i think that's it well uh, i think it was a pleasure having you uh, both of you um, on the show today and uh, Thank you so much for uh, the amazing work that you are uh, doing uh, in the industry. And specifically, it feels uh, really proud when uh, a Pakistani-owned company actually contributes uh, in the larger uh, IT picture. And all the best wishes and good luck uh, to you with your products and uh, you know hunting new business. And we look forward for uh, an, um, you know amazing stuff like that in future as well. Okay, thank you, Hassan. It was nice meeting you. Thank you so much. Uh, right, thank right. you for having us. Thank you so much. Okay, with that, uh, we come to the end of the show. Uh, uh, Allah Hafiz.
اللہ حافظ